Hey there folks and welcome to the video and one of the things I wanted to do today was kind of look back at um, something that I had said just over two weeks ago. Just over two weeks ago it was International Women's Day and I went recently to do a podcast, this is, just came to mind, um, from Dirtfish's Women in Motorsport uh, panels and it was an interview with uh, Michelle Mouton. Uh, so... Vice Champion WRC, what, 1984, was it? 84, I think. And one of the things that stood out for me was when she said, essentially, that she felt like having a woman-only series in something like the WRC would be detrimental to the progress of women in motorsport. And you know what she does very much have a point with where she goes with it. I think it's of the rest of Road Sport could pick up on as well. Because we've already proven with Mouton in the 80s there's not a gender barrier that has some kind of reason for why it's all male champions. Because she very nearly won in Group B and against tough opposition the toughest time of rallying at a tough time in her personal life. And if society had been a bit more equal at the time, she probably would have been champion. One of the greatest champions there ever was, Michelle Bissell. But yeah, when we went to the late 80s and through the 90s, we had, like, awards for, like, Women's Cup. And I think the ERC had some as recently as the past decade. Heck, I think um, Louise Cook picked up one for WRC about just over a decade ago. But I always associate it with um, like the Women's Trophy in the BRC of the late 90s or the kind of early to mid 90s when you had the likes of Louise Aiken Walker. That, that's what I associate with um, the idea the idea of those kinds of championships. The key thing is the reason why the drivers don't do it is why it's not looking so equal is just some of the barriers are still there. And the barriers that are still there aren't going to be solved by going, okay, here's a segregated class for women. And this is something that I think all of the um, sports out there should take notice of, the motorsports in particular. They have to take a conscious effort from them to be more inclusive, to be more effective in society as a result. I mean, it's fantastic that you can see the likes of um, Isabel Garmisch winning a WRC event uh, last year um, alongside Seb Loeb. But at the same time, it was just over 25 years to the date since the last time that a woman stood on the top seven of the WRC podium with Fabrizio Pons, who was, of course, co-driver to Michelle Mouton, but at that time was co-driver to Pierre Iliati. And whilst we do have, you know, Il Camina, for example, as, co as a co-driver... Um, got Rita Hamelainen as a currently active co-driver up towards the top end of rallying. There still needs to be more done. It needs to be done by the sport. And I think I have a solution for it, which is things such as testing programs. Now this is more to do with F1, but rallying could also use this as a good thing if the WRC or F1 went to a team and said hey by the way we're going to allow you to have a test day maybe two extra test days or three over the course of the season but the driver on those tests has to be a woman I reckon they'd take that opportunity 
And there are women in F1 academies as well. Is Jimmy Chadwick still Williams? I think um, Jess Hawkins is still Aston Martin. And it would help build the profile for a lot of the women in motorsport who are trying to compete as drivers. I think that's the way forward. And for those of you who are listening to this right now, going, oh, well, isn't that unfair on the men? Well, a lot of this sport is unfair. Uh, if, if you look at the kind of class aspects of it, talk about Formula 1 briefly. How many F1 drivers can we say are truly of a working class background? The closest you get is, well, maybe Lewis, Valtteri, and Pierre and Esteban Ocon. That's probably the closest you get. So I'd like to see, in particular, with the gender barrier being broken down. And whilst I'm not an appraiser of the kind of rainbow capitalism, more female CEOs, more female billionaires or anything like that, so I think that's a overall more regressive way of looking at it. I think in terms of these sports and these organisations, that's the only way they'll listen, at least for now. And yeah, I am a bit cynical. Because you look at the progress that was happening with W Series and then that went bust now it's the F1 Academy and even then despite winning three seasons the payout for it wouldn't be enough for Jamie Chabot to get funding into um, like a top end F3 or F2 program but those are my thoughts let me know yours in the comment section down below thank you so much for watching I hope to see you again soon bye for now